It was Saturday afternoon, and there was a knock at my door. I answered to find my neighbor, Lisa, standing outside with her son, Micah, in, her, in hand, looking a little frazzled. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Micah. What's up? Jess, could you watch Micah for a few hours? I'm sorry it's such short notice, but Charles and I just got a call and need to take care of some family things. Sure thing. Trouble and I were just hanging around the house anyway. Hearing his name, my mutt pushed through the door to lick Micah. Thanks, I should be able to pick him up after dinner. She finished, she, she fished in her purse. Here's a 20. Get yourself some pizza, maybe? Sounds good. Take whatever time you need. You know Micah's always welcome here. Lisa looked down to her son, who was wrestling a bit with trouble. Micah, be very good for Jess when I'm gone. You'll get a treat later. Okay, Mom. Micah and Trouble ran on, to, on into the living room and resumed playing in front of the television. Everything okay, Lisa? I asked. Um, yeah, I'd rather not go into it. It's, it's, it's just bad timing for us, that's all. She paused for a moment, thinking something over. Anyway, I'll be back as soon as I can. Sorry about all of this, and thank you again. She rushed back over to a driveway where Charles was waiting in the car already. I guess it was a good thing I was home to take care of Micah. Crashing back onto the couch, I started flipping through channels to something more suited to an eight-year-old. He was a fan of How to Train Your Dragon, and it didn't drive me absolutely insane, so it was our usual compromise. Micah stretched out on his belly, kicking his feet up with his chin in his palms, and the dog settled in beside him. Micah, and I'd, Micah had become a staple in my home shortly after he and his parents had moved in about a year ago. Trouble had been living up to his name and had bolted out of the door when I was trying to bring in a few armloads of groceries. Rather than running off down the street, though, he had stopped and started playing with the little brown-haired boy in the lawn next door. His parents had come out to meet me when I went to collect them and introduced themselves. Lisa and Charles Davis were in their early 30s. Lisa worked as an office administrator, and Charles was a consultant of some sort who often went out of town on trips. Lisa confided to me early on that Micah was adopted and had had a rough time adjusting, with, but it seemed to be doing better now. I decided it was best not to talk about it with Micah unless he brought it up first. He and Trouble got on famously, and due to my utter lack of a social life, I spent a lot of time babysitting when Charles was out of town and Lisa had something to do in the evenings. The Davises had also watched over Trouble for me when I went on a trip to see my family for the holidays. After a few more cartoons, I ordered a pizza, pepperoni, and flipped the news back on to catch up on the world a bit while we ate. So how's math going, Micah? Are you getting some, the hang of those fractions? Yeah, he shrugged, staring at his pizza. Well, let me know if you need any help again. I was pretty good at those in school. He sniffled and set down his pizza. Something wrong, kiddo? I put my pizza on my plate and wiped my mouth, concerned with seeing him suddenly so upset. His lower lip trembled, and he wiped a tear away from his eye with his fist. Hey, what's the matter? I patted the couch beside me. Come on up and tell me what's wrong. He crawled up next to me and wrapped me in a big hug while he started crying. I'm going to miss you, Jess, he said between sobs. Miss me? Are you planning on going somewhere? I had a tight grip on the little guy, and Trouble had jumped up on the other side and was resting his head in his lap. It's a secret. I'm not supposed to tell anyone. You can tell me, kiddo. I can keep a secret. I was really worried that something was happening to Micah. He hadn't made a lot of friends in school, and the frequent trips Charles made didn't make his home life seem too ideal. My first thoughts were that another adult had seen this and was setting up to abduct him with promises of taking him away somewhere better, but keep it secret. I'm getting a new brother soon, and when he comes, we're going to have to move away. He blew his nose on the tissues I offered him and looked at me with tear-stained eyes. That's great news that you're getting a brother, but why would you have to move away? He said never mentioned any of this. I was completely caught off guard. To make sure that bad people don't come and take him back, I started putting together pieces of the puzzle. His time before he was adopted by the Davises must have included bouncing through the foster care system. Perhaps he thought that people take away children when they were put into homes. I'd have to bring this up with Elisa when she put him back. Oh, Micah, don't worry. Your parents are good people. Nobody's going to try and take a new child from them if they adopt another. Things must have been very hard for you before you ended up with them, huh? Did you have to go to a lot of other families? No, I don't remember a lot, but there were the other people, and then Mommy and Daddy saved me from them. They told me how bad they were, though. A few years ago, I had a new sister, 
but the bad people came and took her and we moved so that they didn't have to take me to when he told me this he doubled over crying again at this point i had no idea what to think lisa and charles had never told me anything like this was it the overactive imagination of an eight-year-old boy or was something more going on here michael was terribly upset and he was definitely remembering something bad happening Perhaps an adoption had fallen through with the birth mother wanting her child back and they moved to get past it. It wasn't unheard of and it certainly would be hard to understand and traumatizing someone so young. Holding Micah tight against my chest, I zoned out to the news trying to figure out what to tell him. He glanced up at the television as well and suddenly changed demeanor again. Wiping his face, he pointed out the screen. That's my new brother's birth mommy. She's really mean. All she does is scream and say bad words. Mommy and daddy are going to save him too so that she can't be mean to him. I turned up the volume to hear the woman behind the desk. Police continued to look for the missing woman from Greenville. 25-year-old Courtney Eddowes was last seen leaving a Walmart late on the night of May 15th buying diapers and formula. Miss Eddowes is 37 weeks pregnant and doctors say she could be giving birth at any time. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Miss Eddowes, please dial the number at the bottom of the screen.